Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. This episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast, part two of our conversation with two-time Olympic USA women's volleyball team captain Krista Dietzen is brought to you by Compassion International. You can make a difference in a child's life, releasing them from poverty. It's as simple as one child at a time for $38 a month and releasing them from poverty. You can make a difference by going to Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum and sponsoring a child today. Krista Dietzen, the two-time Olympic USA Women's Volleyball Team Captain, is our guest here on Part 2 on the Sports Spectrum Podcast, Part 2 of our conversation with Krista. Yesterday, you heard her journey to volleyball, how she became a volleyball player, fell in love with the sport, and her time in college winning two national titles at Penn State with the Nittany Lions, Big Ten Player of the Year in 2007. And then we just talk about her journey to becoming an Olympic volleyball player. Uh, It's a really great story and how volleyball really intersects with how she became a follower of Jesus Christ. So if you go back and listen to part one, that'll set you up for today, part two of our conversation with Krista. And she's a two-time Olympian, played in the 2012 Olympics, Uh, and won a silver medal there, and then the 2016 Olympics where they won the bronze medal. And on part two, we talked to Krista just about how hard it is to become an Olympian and identity and purpose and how difficult it is. We hear this a lot in sports, identity, being identified as an athlete, as a volleyball player, as a sports you know, broadcaster, whatever your your vocation is, we talk a lot about being identified with that versus, I should say, uh, and compared to uh, identity in Christ and who we are as followers of Jesus. So we talk a lot with Krista about identity. I asked her about retirement too. She retired after the 2016 Olympics and why she knew it was time to step away and sort of this budding speaking career that she now has uh, and being able to share her testimony, to share her story. So really good stuff here from Krista. I just appreciate her transparency. It gets a little emotional here as well because she talks about how God really just kind of wrecked her life in a great way uh, through volleyball. So take a listen. Part two of our conversation with Krista Dietzen, two-time Olympian, former USA Women's Volleyball team captain here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Let me ask you how your experience was like in the Olympics. You get to London, you win the silver medal in 2012. What is that experience like for you? Take me through that. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think three three moments stand out um, for me at the at the 2012 games um, uh, opening ceremonies. I mean, you're it, it's the only it's it's the only time where. All the, nobody's won anything. Nobody's on a Kellogg box or a, um, yeah. Wheaties box. Wheaties box. (laughs) Nobody's on a, you know, on commercials yet. Like everybody's on this, meaning Team USA. And you have, I remember seeing like LeBron James, um, Serena Will, like all these huge, you know, as we see in America, like huge athletes. Yeah. And, you know, popularity wise, and they're, they are just as excited and hyped to be at the Olympics. They've got their cameras out taking pictures. I mean, it's, it's like, you're all, you're all team USA. You're all these, um, you know, you're all playing for the same team and it's really, really special that, and you're all dressed the same. Um, it's just a really special, uh, you know, moment. And then you're chanting USA before going, you know, through the tunnel, um, and then walking, you know, doing the lap around the track. I mean, there's, it's so hard to explain that moment. Um, but it's, it, it, it's for sure rooted, um, you know, rooted in just this, uh, just pride of, you know, your, your country and, um, just the opportunity and so thankful to be, um, you know, representing, um, you know, your country on, on the world stage. So, um, and it's just, yeah, this camaraderie. So yeah, opening ceremonies, um, probably the second one is, uh, actually there's a, uh, and I don't know if the, the other athletes had brought this up, but there's a, uh, spiritual center in, in the, in the village. Mm-hmm. And, 
and I remember in, in London and then they had, they also had one in Rio. Um, and I remember finding it and, you know, they have all the different, all different, um, religions, uh, different rooms, different, um, chaplains. And so anyways, I ended up meeting these, um, these two, these two chaplains that, um, I, they have, you know, different moments where, you know, they'll come and pray for you, um, or different opportunities where they can, you know, you go there for prayer. Um, I ended up going to this Bible study one night and there was probably four to five different languages, different countries represented, represented, and they were doing this Bible study. And I remember this moment where it was the, the word of God was being translated so many different times. Hmm. And, you know, in I'm trying to, yeah, I just read it the other day in, in the word, um, in, in Corinthians where just the unity, uh, in the body of Christ, we all have the same spirit and, you know, whether Jew or Gentile and just, it was just this moment of seeing, um, yeah, just like God on display beyond just one language, um, one country. And it, it was just this really cool, um, display of unity, um, that, you know, we were all worshiping the same, the same God. And so that, that really stands out to me. Um, and then a third moment was probably, and this one was personal was walking across the service line for the very first time. Um, Hmm. something that, sorry, I'm getting emotional. Um, okay. Something, you know, a, a skill that I had struggled with that for, for sure, you know, brought um, pain through anxiety um, for for so many years, but also yeah, God used God used that that pain and that anxiety to draw me to him. Um, and it, it, it brought me into freedom. Um, something that, you know, that weighed me down, um, and that the enemy used, you know, for so long, um, that my identity, you know, he, uh, just made me think that my identity was wrapped up in, in volleyball and God brought me into that used serving, used something that, um, that brought fear and God brought, brought me into freedom through that. Um, and taught me to rely on him, taught me what a relationship, I mean, everything. Um, and so, yeah, walking across, uh, that service line for the first time, um, it was, we were playing Korea and I remember just, it was, it was like, I was, it was like, I crossed a threshold into freedom. Yeah. Uh, and then turning, turning around, it was, it's so funny. I went on like a five or six point run, I had like two aces. I mean, it was just, <laughs> you know, God was just on display. Uh, and yeah, it's for sure embedded in my, um, wow. I, I guess I haven't lived this in a while, um, or relived this in a while. Uh, yeah. Cause like God, God was on display. So yeah, those were three moments that really stood out to me that first Olympics. That's so cool. And yeah, guys end up with the silver medal, which is great. And, and, uh, come back from London with that medal. And then 2016 comes and you're back and you're back in the Olympics again, uh, team captain, of course. And this time you're in Rio, uh, fell short of the gold, of course there, but still medaled, uh, winning the bronze medal. Um, give me the, the cliff notes version of the, of the experience in Rio compared to the experience in London. Yeah. Uh, so every Olympics is, is different and and it's even hard to compare them because, you know, you're dealing with a completely different culture. Uh, I was really special Brazil. The Brazilians love volleyball. You know, they sell every time we go down there to play, they're sold out crowds, drums, you know, everything. Um, so it was really special. It was, it was, um, definitely somebody referred to it kind of as like the volleyball was on display at the Olympics, um, both with beach um, and indoor. Uh, and so that was really special to be a part of. Um, and yeah, you know, we, we, we came up short again, but it's, it's really interesting. Um, 
you know, the silver medalists, at least in team sports, are the you you end the the Olympics on a loss. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the all. I don't know. It's kind of interesting to wrap your head around that, but um, the bronze medal. It's such a gritty match um, to win because, well, number one, you're fighting for a medal, um, and and then to to be on the podium or to be on the podium, but you also just got um, you also just lost you know, 48 hours prior to, or maybe less than, sure. and it's such a gritty match. And it was really special. Um, just quickly, uh, April Ross and, and Carrie Walsh, the, um, the beach duo sure. in the, the 2016 games, they had, they had lost, um, the semifinal match and, and they were such a great example of just grinding out, um, that bronze medal. And I think Carrie even mentions it's one of the, the most special, um, special moments for her in her career. Cause it was such, it was such a grind to, to lose. And then I think they had less than 20, 24 hours or something to then turn around and battle again. And, and so it was just such a great, um, I guess segue for us and such a great example, um, to watch them do it. And then, you know, have the opportunity to do the same thing. Um, you know, several days later. That is interesting. I guess you don't think about, you know, the bronze medalist comes off a win. So you're kind of pumped mm-hmm. up and the silver, it's like, oh, I just gave my all and we lost the championship game, but you still got to go up there and accept the medal. There's a different type of psyche with that. That's interesting. For sure. We're talking to Krista Dietzen here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. There's a couple more questions, Krista. I want to talk about your faith. I know um, the person who introduced us, Matt Doan, was telling me about uh, missions and why that's so important to you and using your faith to kind of go out into the missionary field. Tell us about some of those experiences. And I know you went on a trip to Uganda. So tell us about that and where, why God led you to kind of take those trips. Yeah. Uh, so I think I... Yeah, I mentioned that my relationship with God started on the vault, like through volleyball. And so after retiring, um, so thankful, God made it so clear that it was time for, for me to be done, both physically, um, you know, and then, and then being married, um, I was just ready to, ready to start life. Um, you know, eventually a family, you know, just the, the life after sports, it, it was, it was very clear. So I was thankful for that, but there was definitely, it, there was definitely a transition period. The last, um, the last two years where it's like, okay, God talked to me and I learned what it meant to play volleyball with God and, and rely on him and, um, you know, feel his presence on the court, um, and talk to him through volleyball and then volleyball was no longer. So I'm like, okay, you know, where, where is, where's my purpose now? Um, where's, and then how, you know, hearing from God, learning to hear, hear from God, um, and, and experience his presence now without volleyball. And so, um, kind of the last two years, I, um, I I had to learn what it means to rest Um, and then that my, my value and identity was definitely in, in works. And because I was just go, go, go for eight years, it was jumped from the U S team to a foreign country, kind of lived out of a suitcase. It was, you know, to-do list. I'm a very type A person. So uh, transitioning (laughs) away from that lifestyle, um, you know, it, it was kind of trying to find new passions. I got into gardening, got into, you know, there's some different, you know, other hobbies that I, um, I didn't know I had, I guess, giftings in these, you know, where God, um, I I had other ways to, to enjoy him, to experience him in other ways. And so kind of went on that journey. And then, um, I randomly, I got invited to this Bible study on Tuesday nights. Um, not too far from my house here. I live in orange County now, um, my husband and I. And so, yeah, I got invited to this, this Tuesday night Bible study. And, um, so real quick, fast forward five years ago in, in, um, in 2013, uh, I had heard a pastor talk about her experience in Africa. I don't remember, recall exactly where she was. And she was just explaining, um, how she saw this unexplainable joy on these people's faces, despite not knowing where their next meal was coming from. Um, you know, whether or not they were gonna have a roof over their head tonight, it was just this, you can only explain it by the joy of Jesus. Like that's, 
And so I desired, I, I remember like my heart was stirring, you know, many or five years ago, my heart I, I was stirring, but you know, I was in this career, I was still playing volleyball. I, I knew it wasn't for that time, but I'm like, you know, I remember thinking, hmm, maybe God will call me to Africa one day. Sure enough, I get to this Bible study, fast forward to this, this past February of 2018, get invited to this Bible study, get to the Bible study, um, on each chair, there's a, just a, a card kind of going over the next eight weeks, next eight Tuesdays. And at the bottom, the different topics will cover at the bottom. It says, if you feel called, um, we're taking a team to Gulu, Uganda. And so immediately <laughs> the Lord, the same stirring. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like this, I remember not barely being able to focus on you know, what we were, I remember what we were talking about that night, but the Lord was just knocking on that, that door of let's explore this. Um, and so sure enough, I ended up getting prayer that night of, um, my husband, and I haven't been able to, um, uh, have a family yet. And so it was, um, yeah, there was, it was like, God put it on a, on a silver platter to, to go that we had no family coming in town those two weeks. I mean, it was just, it, it was so clear that he was going to have me go, um, to, to Uganda. And so he made it so clear. I ended up going, um, and just experiencing, experiencing that joy on people's faces that doesn't, that wouldn't make sense. Um, except knowing, except knowing Jesus and, um, and just seeing the power of God on display, um, seeing the book of Acts just come to life before my eyes. I mean, it was just, it was such an incredible experience, um, uh, both for me personally, and then to just witness um, and to just be a part of something so, um, so special. I went with it, um, Crisis Center Ministries, uh, and the the group that led the Tuesday night study, that's... Um, that's part of, there's several people that are, that were several women that were part of, um, part of this ministry. And so, uh, we went over there, we, uh, served the school, actually ended up teaching the kids volleyball, um, which was really fun. Uh, and then we held a three day women's conference. Um, yeah, it was just, I just experienced God on a, on an, on another level on a, um, just the intimacy, uh, with him, um, just, learning and experiencing, um, and just watching him, you know, do his work through people, um, through people over there. It was just such a, a a special, um, a special time and just really increased my faith. So lastly here, take us through now. And you you said you're retired, married, uh, in 2014 and obviously went on that missions trip. So what is God doing right now in your life? How have, how has he been using you, uh, to spread his word, I guess? Sure. So, um, (laughs) kind of funny. I, so that whole, um, performance anxiety that I dealt with on the volleyball court, it was rooted in a, in a deep fear of man. Um, I, I put what people thought about me, um, my, my value, my worth in what man thought of me, um, Mm -hmm. over God. And so, um, I, someone said, if, if, if there, if you have a fear of man, it's, it's always, it, it's always going to win until you see yourself as God sees you. And so I had, um, I had a deep fear of public speaking actually. Um, and, and it, being, um, you know, God taking me to the Olympics twice, people asked me to speak. Oh yeah. And, and so, <laughs> um, and so those two years before going to Uganda, um, I would kind of come up with every excuse in the book not to go and, and public speak. And sometimes, you know, there wasn't, <laughs> couldn't come up with an excuse and I would, I would do it. And it was just, it wasn't fun. That, that anxiety, that fear, similar to what I felt when I would, um, when I was struggling with serving on the volleyball court kind of came flooding back and I didn't know what the root of it was. And I almost became complacent with it, with the fear of, well, I just going to have to deal with this. Like I'm, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't know that, um, I guess I didn't understand that God, you know, wanted me to be free free from that because he was calling me to, to, 
to speak and, and to, um, to share his word and to share, um, to share him with, um, with my sphere of influence, with the crowds that I get to, to, to speak in front of. And so sure enough in Uganda, um, during, uh, I received prayer, um, from, from these two women and the Lord released me, um, from that fear of, of man, um, and just totally set me free, um, to that. I wasn't, that I wasn't, I, I didn't have to come up with, um, the perfect thing to say, you know, I, I'd be so nervous to, um, to not, reach all the different people that I was speaking to. If I was, you know, speaking to a group of volleyball girls, like, how am I, like, I was so stressed about what to say because I didn't want to, I don't know, didn't want to miss anybody or offend just all these, just these different stresses that the enemy would use, um, to make me so fearful to speak. And the Lord showed me that I was just a vessel and that he was going to give me what to say. Um, it's kind of funny. He, um, just through prayer, just and hearing his hearing his voice, like he's like, you're done with notes, you're done with over preparation. Everything that is such a part of sports mindset. I mean, I remember after coming back from, um, or, or even in Uganda, I remember just before I was being uh, freed from that that fear, and then going and speaking, like I, like I just it was get rid of your notes. Um, you know, the whole overanalyzing, you know, <laughs> watching video, yeah. all those kind of things of, of, of analyzing it are done. Like I am taking this, this is just hearing what the, what the, the Lord was, was showing me and I'm totally free. Um, and now pre- preparing for, for talks and, and teaching, it's a blast because it's just, it's spending time and, and, and God will just will show me what to share. And, and if it's, if I, if, if it's just about that one person that he wants to to touch or speak or whatever through me that night, then fine. It's just, it's all his will and the whole, and so I'm, it's just an, a deeper level of, of, of freedom, um, that I experience with him. And now public speaking is a blast. And that's, that's what I've been, um, that's what I've been called to. That's awesome. She is Krista Dietzen, two-time Olympian, former USA women's volleyball team captain, Pittsburgh native. And uh, we could probably spend another hour talking about Pittsburgh sports, but we won't do that. But I appreciate <laughs> yeah, <let's> <laughs> right? We could, uh, yeah. we could talk about that for an hour. But listen, Krista, I appreciate you for, for joining us and sharing your story here and uh, wish you nothing but the best. Hopefully we can catch up again soon. Great. Thank you so much for having me. And that was Krista Dietzen, two-time Olympic USA women's volleyball team captain. We appreciate Krista for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast, both part one and part two. Go back and listen to part one if you haven't yesterday. And uh, thank you again for listening to part two of the podcast today. You can reach Krista on her website. Check her out, KristaDietzen.com, KristaDietzen.com. You can also find her on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Got a lot of cool things going on. Maybe you want to bring her in for a speaking engagement, hear her story, hear her testimony based upon everything you heard here on this podcast. Check her out over at her website, KristaDietzen.com. And that's D-I-T-Z-E-N. D-I-T-Z-E-N, KristaDietzen.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. We want to encourage you to subscribe and download this podcast on Apple iTunes Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, everywhere podcasts are found. We also want to encourage you to take a screenshot of this podcast and let people know about the interviews that we've been doing here on the podcast. So many of them. We're over 400,000 downloads of the podcast, and that's all because of you listening to this episode, listening to these episodes of the podcast and telling others about it. And so many great guests. We've been so fortunate to have so many cool people to talk to on the podcast. And of course, we want to talk to more. And I love talking to Krista because it was volleyball. And we don't get a chance to talk a lot of sort of the the other sports besides the baseball, the football, the basketball too often. And we want to. You know, we want to talk to the to the professional bull rider and to the professional hockey player and even the, the minor league hockey player and the volleyball player like Krista. We want to talk to those people as well, even high school coaches. So if you know somebody who has a great story, a great testimony that you think would work on the podcast or maybe just an article on them on the Sports Spectrum website, 
Email me, jason at sportspectrum.com, jason at sportspectrum.com, and let us know about them. We'd love to hear the stories and love to try and share those stories with you guys here on the podcast. As always, you can reach us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. Sports underscore Spectrum is our handle on Twitter and on Instagram, so check us out over there. And we also want to encourage you to subscribe to our magazine. It's $18. It's an amazing deal. If I went up to you and said, do you have a $20 bill and I will subscribe you to the Sports Spectrum magazine for an entire year, I think you probably do it. I mean, we're talking about four issues, quarterly issues, really great kind of kind of articles and awesome pictures. The design is so well done by our guy Aaron here on Sports Spectrum. And I just want to encourage you to get it because it's great uh, to hand out to people at youth groups and churches and ministries and athletic events, even upward basketball, people, places like that, youth basketball leagues. Wonderful opportunity here to take the magazine and just hand it out as a great outreach tool. So again, if I told you it would be less than $2 a month, $18 for an entire year, most people would jump on that. And so I'm encouraging you to jump on this. Go to sportspectrum.com and subscribe today to the Sports Spectrum magazine. You will love it. It makes a great gift, especially this time of year as the holidays start to creep up on us. Sportspectrum.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time right here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. Really enjoy uh, sharing these stories and really thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Sports Spectrum.